Hello. Happy Friday. <clears throat> Surprise. <laughs> I um, have to sew some samples because um, I agreed to teach a class at my local store yesterday and um, I realized like the class is at the end of the month so I need to get some samples in there really quick so that people want to sign up for it. So and plus you know new pattern something simple I'm pretty excited just to sew something so hello Louise. <laughs> yeah I just went live. I just went live as a surprise just because um, I have to make these willow tanks. <clears throat> have to. I make it sound like it's a chore, but I'm pretty excited about it. And I decided to make three with some of the fabrics I have here. So um, I'm still just threading my machine because, of course, all three, each one takes a different thread. So, you know, there's that. So, yeah. How are you doing? Which which stream were you rewatching? Oh, yesterday's. <laughs> you were you were here though. <laughs> so the willow tank is really simple. It's got a darted bodice. You see that? A darted bodice here, bias binding finishing on the neckline and the armholes, and then you can make a dress version which has a pleat right here. And I'm gonna do one dress. Um, and it's striped, so the stripes are going to go this way on the bodice and this way on the skirt because that's how I could fit it. They're really tiny stripes. And I'm going to do two tanks, both, no, I take one has a center back seam that I added because I want to uh, play around with fitting my center back there, my swoopy back, and um, try not to get into that hem and the pleat. And then my dress has a center back pleat, center back seam. Hi, Siobhan. How's it going? <clears throat> and then um, I added a little keyhole neckline de um, detail on one of them. So, so yeah. I just thought we could hang out and sew together. You know. The huge. <laughs> you, you, oh, okay, okay. Cool. That's awesome, Louise. All right. So, um, I have one of my fabrics. Whew. That is bright. Oops, let's see. Did I just open two of those? Let's uh, break back that brightness down a little bit. All right. A little better? I'll have the lights on today because it's actually sunny. It's a little dark, huh? A little dark. <laughs> So yeah, and I got my uh, tech um, person. Um, hi, Christy. This is a surprise. Yeah, I need to. I just um, agreed to teach a class. That's fine, Chavon. Um, I just agreed to teach a class locally, and I I couldn't decide on what to teach because I'm just like whatever you want me to teach, and they're like, no, 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 whatever you want to teach, and I really wanted it to be size inclusive. Um, but not intimidating. It's bedtime. Oh, okay. Oh God, I've told, so done that. Yeah, started washing something. I'm like, oh, I can't let it sit in the washing machine. Yeah, and same with my hand knits. Um, so at the last second, I was like, why don't I just do something very straightforward like the willow tank? And then, um, that's good, you can still see it. Cause there's a lot of options with it you know it's got bias binding and i'll do french seams in class and it's not very many french seams right someone could do the dress so there's no sleeves which i know would a sleeves appeal to a lot of people especially they they told me that but you know i think like it gets hotter than hades here and tank tops are really useful so i feel like this would be a good staple and I think enough people will sign up for it. And then I can like test out what it's like to teach people. You know what I mean? Like they're my guinea pigs. <laughs> so I can say, okay, you know, like see what they ask, what they bring to class, how prepared are they, you know? So we'll see. All right, so uh, I have a lot of trouble deciding what is the right side of this fabric. You know, good thing there's only two pieces. Maybe I'll look at this part, not the, I feel like 
Isn't it amazing that they can make embroidery look as good on the front as, the, as it is on the back? These are all uh, pieces of lint. <laughs> it's tied under the arms. Good to know. Hi, Sa uh, Marsha. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, right, Chopin? I know. I've been nervous about it, but now I'm kind of excited about it. I feel like it'll be good for lots of reasons. It'll get me out in the world. Um, it'll get me hanging out with sewers, which is awesome. And... Um, I feel like teaching one on one, or not teaching in person, will help me learn to how to communicate better, and that's what I would like. I would like to communicate what I do better. So good to know about the underarms being tight. I'm making three right now, so that's that is actually that is at least something we can adjust on the fly, right? I know this fabric's pretty cool, and they, I think all my fabrics I bought there. It's, it's like a, a sheeting, too. But which side is the right side? You know, I think this side is the right side. The, the stitching looks nicer. Okay, so let's do the dart. And we'll just get going. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try and sew these up pretty quick. So. Awesome, Christy. What do you, what's your plan with that? Like, how do you plan on doing that then? I'm kind of curious. I'm nervous about it. <laughs> I feel like every time I go to the fabric store, I'm way too chatty because partly I'm nervous. Um, I don't really want to talk about me, but I'm super excited about what I'm doing. So I want to talk about that without talking about me, you know? And I love seeing what they're all up to because they're all doing things I've never done before. So, oh, really? Okay, really? Shoot! I'm cutting out the size twelve. That's good to know. I almost backtacked. I kind of want to because this fabric is so chunky. This fabric is really chunky, this like, um, this embroidered stuff. <laughs> I didn't iron it before I cut it out either and I was thinking like, mainly because I don't think I would iron this fabric once I wash it. It's um, too bumpy. I've never done a FBA. So, I'm glad to know that. And maybe now is my chance to learn what people mean when they do a full bust adjustment. <laughs> I added um, a center back seam to a couple of them, Christy, because you know I have a, that issue with my back getting kind of baggy back there. And so I was thinking that might help, but I know the pleat's in the way. Oh, cool. <clears throat> this is cotton, yeah. That'll be good. I was actually thinking of doing the same thing, taking a quilting class, because I was watching one of the moms of the um, gals from the fabric store. She, um, I don't really know who's who. Like, I'll be really honest. Like, I met them, I met, met a bunch of people once at that sewing club meeting, which was really fun. And we haven't had another one because the gal's been really busy. Oh, I need this. And I followed as many people as I could find on Instagram, which was great. And then, um, and one of them I know is her mom. And I know, I know, I've met them both. And her mom posted this video of her sewing onto paper, which I know that's a thing in quilting. I'm not, I'm not that ignorant. But I haven't really seen it done. And, I, and she must be doing a special technique because she was actually doing a little video. She was like, this is how I do blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. I had to watch that thing like 10 times to see what was going on. Like I was like, how is that staying on the paper? Because she would just flip it over and then sew and the, and the fabric would just stick. And then I realized she was using a special glue. So I was like, you know what? This would be fun. Maybe I should just take a class and see all these little things that they do. Oh, I'm gonna do French seams. 
I'm gonna do French seams. Uh, what's the seam allowance on this? I didn't even look. <laughs> it's grain line, so it could be like half inch. Half inch, half inch, let's see. Is it five eighths? Seam allowance are half inch, I knew it. And armhole, neckline armholes and binding pieces are a quarter inch. I love them. Huh, okay. Dang, Christy, that's kind of a big jump, though. Do you feel like it, the armhole could just be deeper and that would help? Or do you feel like it's tight across like your back and right here? Yeah, I, I totally. I totally agree with you, Louise, but that's not a pattern people can buy in their store, you know? So I have to pick something that is sold in their shop so people have access to it really easily. And I totally agree with you that that is a really great beginner pattern, especially because it's easy to fit. That was a big back tack. Go machine, go. There's so much lint. Like I haven't done anything since uh, taking this out of the dryer. <clears throat> and you don't have big boobs. Ooh, see? And the armhole doesn't look pretty. Yeah, I mean, I could see maybe. When in doubt. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that will be high up there. You're right. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to drop my armhole down. I'm just going to do it. Christy made me do it. Let's just do it. I'm going to drop it a lot. Not talking about it. It feels like it needs to be cut up around the center front armpit. Halfway up towards the shoulder. Like here. Like, oh, like this. Not here. The lighting is weird. <laughs> Wait, you just want me to do it? Yeah, I'll totally do it. I'm just going to do it. No one knows I'm making these for the class, right? So I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so um, you're thinking like it's a little tight. Like is it like creeping on like your, your um, not your straps, but this part right here is creeping onto and then it's like hindering you right there. So you just want a little bit more. Is that what you're thinking? Because it does look really shallow. It doesn't look really shallow. It looks a tiny bit shallow. Yeah, okay. I think um, I will drop it down. I'll drop it down like three quarters of an inch and I'll scoop it out the front. How's that? Let's just do it. You like that scientific measuring there? <laughs> okay. So the main thing you wanna worry about with, um, with um, armholes and tanks is that it covers your bra. Just a little bit shallow, okay. Okay, right, well, let's, let's fix that. I did see a lot of people wearing it that were um, not as busty as me. They weren't busty at all, actually. And then, um, but I saw lots of other people wearing it too. I just felt like um, how, I felt like some of the ones I saw on gals that were more my size had a baggier version. So I was wondering, like, did they just, did they just cut a bigger size? Cause that, it didn't necessarily look more flattering, you know? So, <laughs> don't worry, Christy. 
don't worry i have enough fabric i can probably make another one of these um or i'll just make i i like this is great this is what i want why look at my darts oh i was gonna say look how far off there that's because i've already trimmed it <laughs> You know, worst case scenario, it is too big and I wear a camisole underneath it. And guess what? I was already planning on doing that because fabric's almost see-through. You guys can't tell, but it, look at that. Can you see my hand through that? It's pretty see-through, so you're okay. So I bought mirrors today because I was going to try and make like a homemade um, three-way mirror. It turns out there's some geometry inv involved in making a three-way mirror. <laughs> so I think a, a, just a regular mirror is gonna be what I do. <laughs> so, so um, may have to return two of them. But the funny thing is, like I have a truck now, right? So I'm like, ooh, I'm at Home Depot and I got my truck and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my, I'm gonna buy my mirrors. And I go out to my truck and they don't fit. <laughs> they don't fit in the truck bed. And I can't fit them in the cab. I could fit two of them, but I couldn't fit the third because the third one was a little wider and taller because I wanted one wide one and then I didn't want to spend enough, like as much to get three that size. So I got two others that were just a little bit shorter and narrower. Yeah, right, exactly, Christy, me too. I would totally, that's why I want to get this pattern right. So, um, so I had to sit there and like finagle it and like do all kinds of stuff in my truck bed and I finally got it, but I was so worried driving all the way back I was like well it's gonna come back and it's gonna be broken at least one of them will be all right so let's um let's continue with the French seams yeah it's it's gets so hot here and um you know women of a certain age get hot and maybe they would like sleeved garments but a lot of them are like they're too hot so um yeah, I think this will be this will be a great start, and people could wear a little shirt over this. So is this just like a really big, gigantic, fat hem on the bottom? <laughs> Yay, trucks! <laughs> right. It was so funny because um, the reason I didn't have a truck for chicken boots was because, funnily enough, the truck bed's too small. My minivan held way more, and it was longer, and it was waterproof. You know, the back was waterproof, so that's why I had a minivan. So when I got the truck, I was like, it's okay if the truck bed won't fit my booth anymore because I'm not carrying a booth anywhere. But then the first thing I go and buy, a mirror, a dumb like wall mirror, won't fit in there. I shouldn't say that. I did get it to fit though. Because I'm crafty that way. Got my spatial stuff down pat. All right. So this lumpy bumpy fabric is kind of funny. You can tell like there's some definitely some cutting imperfections. And I think it's just because of where it got smoothed out in between the lumpy bumpy bits, you know? So it's kind of funny that way. All right, so Christy, I think I'm gonna try it on right now even though I don't have the whole seam allowance in because I know you're nervous and I don't want you to be nervous. Right, exactly, Julia. <laughs> Yeah, so so does do you him I, I can look at the directions, but do you just do it one time like that? Just a really wide one? Right? Just like that, huh? Because it's a pleat for the dress, and I see a, a, a notch here, so I didn't. you don't go like that, right, for the tank. Okay, it's a good thing we made that change. Quarter first in the big old hem. Okay. All 
All right, that, that turned out. Thank you for the tip, Christy. That, that would have been too tight, you're right. Okay, let's finish. Um, let's see if my iron still likes me. I did drop it today. You made the FBA. Yeah, that's what Christy was saying, yeah. So um, I need to learn more about the FBA. Because I honestly am like, what's the difference between that and a dart? So I need to, I need to see it. Cherry pie. All right. So my, I got a tech person coming tomorrow and hopefully they're gonna fix the cameras all up. I already talked to them on the phone. It's a slash and spread. Oh, okay. It's a slash and spread. So it's a bigger dart. Yeah, and I, I feel like this pattern has potential. Like I feel like a few, I'm waiting for my iron to heat up. That's why I'm just sitting here. Um, there's a few tanks out there. And I saw some gal like, I made a crop tank. Do you guys want the pattern? Let me make the pattern. And I was thinking, Aren't there like three crop tanks out there right now? So I was trying to decide which one was different and what they look like compared to each other and how they fit, you know? So um, getting a good fit through the armhole in relation to the bust is always tricky, but once you got it, it works for everything. Oh, okay, you added the surface there. Hmm. So when you slash spread, you have to decrease it somewhere. Because you can't, unless you are slashing all the way across the pattern piece, you know. You know, I never, we never looked at those things on the internet. I promised you guys I would look at it at the end of the stream yesterday. So um, if you remind me, we'll look at that. I pulled up the book. I can't remember the other thing. Maybe it was the bootstrap dress form we were going to look at. But maybe I could look, we could look at a tutorial for an FBA. There's at the edge. Okay, that makes sense. Because slash and spread, you literally, you can't, you can't just cut into the middle of a piece of paper and spread it. It would just, you know, it just doesn't do that, right? Unless you're putting in a go day, which is a total, you're not putting in a go day there. That would be really weird. So you'd have to go all the way to the edge of the paper because you need um, it to be released somewhere, you know? Let me iron this real quick. Bye, Siobhan. Aw. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, maybe. Have a nice weekend if we don't. Sorry guys.
Okay. Bye, Siobhan. Siobhan, I think you're right. Siobhan. I, I try and practice your guys' names sometimes. You really like the FBA. That's great to know. It makes you really... Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember what the woman who started it looks like. Is that Jen Beeman? Right? Jen Beeman? I wouldn't think that she's shaped that way, but she could be very slender up through here. Yeah. You know? Um, okay, I noticed an issue. Where's... Oh, yeah, look. <laughs> Fix that. Let's see here. Alrighty. Poke that through. How did I miss that? I think the tip of the, the edge of the dart was just folded funny. Like I said, I didn't iron this fabric uh, first. She's very slender. Okay. Yeah. That could be it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is really classically um, how someone drafts is so that it fits them really well. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, people feel like there's something wrong with that. But the thing is, we'd all draft patterns to fit ourselves. It's only a problem if the body type you're doing it for... Um, you're not going to get enough customers for it, you know. Okay, so let me put my other side of my friend's name. So don't tell anyone, but I'm using cream thread, and you can't tell. This will probably, be, all three of these will probably be hanging up in the, in the store too <laughs> but you know I don't have any white bobbins you does that one fit you really well I have that one too and I really want to make that I really want to make that I really want my cover stitch to work again maybe I should play around with it I feel like I can fix it I'll just threaten it. All right. Okay. Lumpy and bumpy. I started with this one because I didn't do any mods to it until Christy showed up. <laughs> Are you Christy? That's so funny. No one will know. One, two, three, okay. And then we're on to the binding. I can really tell I favor I favor fabrics with a cream background because I could not find a binding in my stash that had a white background. Like the ones I could just wouldn't go with it, you know. Oh, the, okay, that's good to know. The Gemma tank and it has cups. That I know the Pharaoh looks pretty cool. I, you know, I like the alder, but I don't like the back of it. Hmm. What do you have? You said you have mine. You love her armhole. Yeah. Yeah, as far as the, the indie pattern drafters go, I, I, I kind of rank Colette um, and grain line up there at the top. All right, so um, I think I'm going to hem this right now. I don't know why. I just want to. I'm going to push my seam to the back. 
it's so funny like this is this is such a good example the notches on this and it's nothing they did wrong at all it's like you kind of have to have the notches oh for the pharaoh that's awesome the pocket is an organ <laughs> i mean miracle i didn't know that i'm gonna check that out i almost picked that for this class and it has sleeves right so i was thinking it would be good um so there's there were notches here to denote the the hem but um they're gone and they would be gone if you surged it or whatever. So um, that is really classic. And so that's why having a hem shape is so much help, more helpful. Yeah. Oh, I did, yeah, the whole, or, okay, wait. I was just checking to see if this is the back. Yep, that's the back. Can you hear this fabric? It's so crisp and bed sheets and sounding. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna iron this. Before Louise tells me to. Okay. What do you love? What sound do you love? <laughs> oh, you love that the sheet sound? Yeah. Yeah. I know it does. It sounds really good. It would have sounded good if it would have been too tight though. So I'm really glad we we edited the arm hole. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna turn this one by hand as I go. But boy, the, the little lumpy bumpies are, it's going to, I bet my hem will look wiggly because of that. I just noticed a flaw on the fabric, but thankfully it's in my hem. There's a little tiny red thread woven in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, it's like a sheeting that they've embroidered. See this? Flower, there's a half flower and it's folding over onto that one. It's so thick right there. I mean, I guess I want this to look somewhat good since it's, I want to lure people into my class, right? More than somewhat, maybe. Hi, Michelle. Do you really like this one? You're, well, that's okay. Ironing is good. So, Michelle, um, right before I started sewing, Christy said that she finds the armhole to be kind of tight. So, um, I sewed the shoulders and then slipped it over my head, and it kind of did seem like it could be kind of tight. So, I made it a little deeper, and then I kind of carved a little bit out of the front armhole. So, is that your experience? She's, she's on Twitch, by the way, you guys. You've made it four or five times. Oh yeah, you see the little fabric flaw right there? It's a little it's a little red thread woven into the woven into the fabric. Um you know you know the trick to doing this, um, Christy, is because the hem is laying really nice and flat right now. Like to, to that I don't have to pin this. When I turn this under, as long as I'm kind of keeping an eye on the that it's parallel and I'm doing an okay job of that I mean granted I'm talking to you guys and there's lumpy bumpy flowers but also I'm pulling I'm pulling on it because it's on the grain 
the grain line's helping me out there and the fact that I ironed it and the fact that it's not too curved. Like I could, I, you know, you've seen me do shirt hems and, it, and it's a little tr trickier. So it wants to get narrow right here because this flower wants to either fold all the way or none at all. So I like to do this, like to poke it under and it just kind of does the right amount so too. So that's my little tricks. It just comes with handling fabric over and over. You just kind of get to know what it's going to do, what it won't do. Hi, Nancy. You change the seam allowance to quarter inch, Michelle. So Christy, Michelle says, she said, yeah, she changed the seam allowance too to quarter inch. So. Oh, I wouldn't iron bed sheets. I'd rage quit on that. <laughs> eh, it's getting a little wide right here. Let's see how it looks. Oh, it's pretty good. This fabric's really cute. Okay, so um, I picked kind of a funny binding choice. I picked a pink binding <laughs> for the inside. <laughs> the, the colors are so terrible. I really need to get better at adjusting this for you guys. Let's see. <laughs> wow, Louise, that's so funny. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Um, look, I even cut narrower bias binding. I followed the directions. Because, you know, if I'm going to teach this, I need to make sure I do it the way it says. I want to see if this piece is long enough without piecing it. I don't need to piece it if otherwise. Plenty long. Um, they have you piece it together in a circle, but I don't trust that. <laughs> so I'm going to start. I'm going to start kind of just behind this the shoulder seam on the back, too. Actually, I need to do this on the, the front, the outside. And you know, I actually want, I need something to, so I can tell it's the back. Just a second. I think I'll just use a piece of bias. Yeah. All right, so let's turn it inside out. Is this my piece? Let's see. I was going to pick the longest one. <laughs> okay, they're all pretty long. Okay. It's the one I trimmed. Which one's that? Here it is. Um, I'll just make like a little piece of um, bias for the, the back neck, you know, like it definitely has a, a front and a back. But um, I like to see it at a glance, you know. Hi, Quilter Knits. Oh, you know, I, um, 
Well, I, my fabric store has asked me nicely if I would teach for them and I've been kind of putting them off. And so I finally said yes yesterday. And they kind of nailed me down on, a, on some dates and um, a pattern. And so I picked this. And I need some samples for the store so that people can see what it is and the possibilities. And so, and because the class is in a month, I figured I should um, just do them really quick and get them in there. And you know, because it's something new, I'm also excited to sew something new. So yeah, that's why. And, and so I just put a little thing on Instagram stories. I was like, you know, I'm cutting this out. You guys wanna, you guys wanna watch? And a couple, three or four of you said, yeah, sure. So. I was like, sure, cool. I'm, I'm all set up for tomorrow, you know, so. All right, wait, where's my center back? I didn't mark the center back because I knew I didn't need it to match to anything, but I'm going to mark it. I'm gonna put my little, this is my little, like, this is the back. It needs to go on the inside. I'm sewing on the outside first so that's why i'm sticking it in there so i don't forget and a little piece of bias won't unravel this is on your list too that's awesome it seems like a few of you have made it which is great i literally was like looked at this and i'm like oh sarah do you really need to buy a tank pattern you can make it your own so i'm really glad that i actually have a excuse to make it work class it'll be fun yeah so um if you do make it a quilter um christy said when she made it that the armhole was kind of tight and um She's made a few, so I decided to kind of throw it on after I put the shoulders together, I just threw it on. And I kind of could tell that it could be that way for me too. So I just, on the spot, dropped the armhole three quarters of an inch on the front and the back, just straight down. Um, this is the neckline, I'll show you in a second. And then I kind of carved out the front armhole a tiny bit from like the mid to down, so. Oh, it's 20% off on Indie So. There you go. Awesome. Oh, I'm trying not to pull this. I'm trying to keep this nice and loose because it's the kind of bias that might give me a problem because it's to the inside of the garment. Although the Myrna changed my mind a little bit yesterday, I'm still not convinced that it'll always work. So I just, you know, fold back my start and then I line it up when I come back to it or thereabouts. And that's how I do my start and stops with binding. I don't seam it together. You totally could. It would look nice. But getting it just right, there's my back. <laughs> it's kind of cute. All right, I'm gonna edge stitch. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna clip, we're gonna clip, we're gonna clip. Ooh, this would be so easy to nip through the the um, seam because when I'm trying to get through these big chunky things, I'm like, and then it, I could go through, you know. All righty. I was pretty excited that this pattern has binding, you know me. <laughs> I said, ooh, it has binding at the store, and everyone's like, no one says that when they see that in a pattern but you. I'm like, I'm gonna change that one person at a time. I want everybody to feel that way. I love the, I love binding. I think people could use contrast binding with less than a fat quarter too. So you want to bind the world. <laughs> oh yeah, so I just, I'll show you on the armhole, Christy. I just fold the start down, that's all. You just gotta remember to fold it down when you start. Just fold it back like a 
half inch, three quarter, an inch, whatever you want. And then when you come back around to it, if it's a circular thing like this, um, then just line up the raw edges, the ends, and, and clip. See, look, that's all it is. This was my start and this was my end. And then when I start, I don't start directly on this. You can, like in this case, it actually would behave pretty easily by starting here and I can, but if it's a little thick or you're having trouble kind of getting it to behave, I just start like behind it and then get to it or in front of it, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't actually check where the placement of the bust art is. This is my first one. I haven't made the scout tea. That one and I've been seeing a lot of the plantain tea and it's free. And what did you think of the, hi Lisa. How, what did you think of your muslin on the Scout? Yeah, are you on Instagram, Louise? I know like it's not for everybody, but the hashtag thing is really, really great. You're not sure you like the fit of the Scout? That's a, that's a knit tee or is it woven? I can't remember. Is that woven, the Scout? Not knit? Look at how nice it is to use the right width of binding and not the width I always do. <laughs> Ooh, this is going so nicely. So I think I was telling you guys, what is it, Wednesday? Yeah, that my parents found a house that so we went and saw it that day and, it, and it's awesome. My mom was all smiles, it was awesome. <laughs> Thought I'd tell you guys that, you guys were all so sweet. You can kind of see my pink binding through the front of this fabric because it's so sheer. It's a good lesson. Good. I like that. Quorum tea. This is one inch wide. Oh, so Christie's made the scout tea. Okay. It's woven. Okay. A woven t shirt. Um, Christy, which one did I, I've done a bunch of sleeve caps. You really got to put that, that first stitch in the, the, the basting stitch, but don't make it long. Don't make it like a gathering stitch. Just make it your normal stitch length, unless it's like a really heavy duty fabric. But, um, if you just have like a regular old, you know, fabric, you know, nothing too crazy, I, I would just, um, use your regular stitch length on it. Okay, so Christy, this is what I do. I, when I start, I just fold back a little piece like this. The reason I don't put it right on the, I mean, I'm sure you guys know, the reason I don't put it on the seam is that it would just get really bulky there. There's no reason to fight it. I didn't use my one and three eighths, exactly. I followed the directions. Look at me following directions. I'm gonna want all these teas. I have to wait a month to have them back. <laughs> oh, that's not that's not a very nice juncture right there. So let's smooth this out. I 
I've got too much stuff on my table right now. A lot of binding on this one. You know, the reason they don't do facings for something like this is um, they would flip out, you know. They have a cotton broadcloth, three-dimensional, oh, like fringe, oh, that's cute. Yeah, it will be, Nancy, exactly. It's not gonna be closed, but it's it's helpful. Yeah, that they're gonna, they're gonna have like a, you know, a kitchen and a yard, you know, because I have a dog. I think that right there. My mom had a big old apple pie on the counter when I got there. Not that she'd baked, like she bought it, you know, when we brought um, um, Mexican food from the Mexican truck that's um, right next near their house so they could try it out, you know, because me and Cricket like it. Um, so that was good. And their dog was so cute. He was, it was like he knew that was his house and he was showing our dogs around. He's like, look what I can do here. I can run around. And there's this cool thing over here. He was, he was in heaven and he was like, look at this window. I stand here and I can see out the window when people come and I can stand up on my paws here. <laughs> look at this one. So yeah, it's, it's, I like this. It's kind of, um, it's like, it's almost like it's like overdeveloped. You know what I mean? Um, it looks darker on the camera. Yeah. Um, the teeth. What about that? Yeah, right, Louise? That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah, she's hinted. Make her some of the clothes. What about the teas and a month to get them back? Teas and a month to get... Oh, because... Um, you mean these? Oh, because... Um, I'm making these as a, the sample so people will want to sign up for my class. And I'm just going to go and drop them off today or tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, the class is June 28th, so I'll be able to pick them up then. They didn't ask me to make these, but they said, you know, you, you probably having a sample. You know, that's why. Yeah, right, Julia? I know. Someone, there's an orange and a grapefruit tree on their, in their yard. And someone picked all the oranges and grapefruits right before they moved in. <laughs> funny. Alrighty. But it's a cute little house. There's all kinds of little secrets about it. And you can tell it's got some, you know, charm from when it was built. So I love that little cubbies and stuff like that. All right. This is my last armhole. So. Oh, Nancy. Yeah, no, he, well, just, you know, don't chug up too much. He, he, he actually thinks the hotels is his house, his, his house too. And my mom said, you know, he's going to be really confused because he's made some friends there and he thinks that's home and he gets really excited when we go to the hotel, you know, I know Louise, they just pick all the fruit. It's so weird. Maybe it was the owners. Maybe it was some neighbors that were like, oh, hey, maybe we should go pick up fruit. I know, like as if they could use. 50 grapefruits and oranges, you know, because let me tell you, like, that is not a rare thing around here. They're, they're everywhere. <laughs> you know? It's not like, um, you're like, oh, these are super special or they're, you know, avocados and they're worth $5 each <laughs> somewhere, but whatever. There's still a few at the very top of the tree and Cricket climbed and got a couple and it's their trees now. And my mom's a really avid gardener. I'm really afraid I'm going to like slice right through my stitching because of these flowers. This is the, the bottom, right? Okay, that's all I'm going to clip. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I did this wrong. I did this wrong. I did that wrong. I did that wrong. Dang. I did that the way I always do bias. 
Dang. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'll get enough people. I think they're gonna put like a four person minimum on it. So I don't know how many max to put on it. I made it so that the binding was gonna finish on the outside. Yeah, I sewed it on like I always sew binding on everything. Just how to have it. Oh, I'm not gonna rip it. Sheeting rips so easily. Q Nancy, exactly. I was waiting too. <laughs> She's like, what is it again? Is it steam ripper? Dang it. I hope I have enough binding. I don't want to cut anymore. I was thinking, oh, I'm almost done with this one. We can go to the next one. I want to do the dress. Anyone know, anyone made a willow dress? I'm a little worried about that one. But like I said, I put a center back seam in it because I would really like to start adjusting the backs of my garments so that they fit better. And they're usually too baggy in the back, but not in a I'm so thin way, but in a weird, let's pull here because we don't know what to do, you know, fabric. So. Nancy's probably like watering plants or getting pollen off her deck or something. Working on her dress for her. <laughs> Dang, I can't believe I did that. I would um, I was going I was gonna just sew it anyway, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> she came she came back. We've been waiting for you, Nancy. <laughs> no one robbed you of your command. Where's my other one? Uh, yeah, like a molded back. Have you heard of a molded back, Julia? It's kind of a 30s way of adjusting the back of a garment. They used to always have a back center back seam. And instead of... Um, because darts would be really great and more, um, did you, Michelle, that's so funny, you made this exact same mistake. Like you could totally do the binding that way, but I already finished the neckline. And um, yeah, you went, exactly, You could. I would totally w go with it. And this is gonna be a sample for my class. So I wanna show one sewn the way that the pattern suggests um, so that they, are, they have the right expectation, you know. But, um, Having darts, more like two darts at least in the back would be best way to adjust the back, of course. But I'm not going to mod this pattern a lot because it is for a class. And I just thought it'd be a good example. It's locally here. No, no. It's just my local fabric store, Honey Run. I might be able to use this piece if I have to. They've been asking me to teach classes and nicely, you know, just like, hey, you know, you're welcome to teach a class, Sammy. And I was like, well, I can't think about that. And so yesterday when I was like, you know, I can think about that. They're like, awesome. I was like, yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't fit that into my brain for a bit. I need a little time. All right. So I should have known like switching, switching to the, um, it's like finishing out the, the neckline completely was going to make that happen. That's awesome, Nancy. You love doing the cropped mod. Oh, for this tank. Yeah, it looked a little long when I tried it on just now. I might do that for the blue one I'm making. I made, I cut one on the bias. And um, I cut one of the dresses. Did Have you made the dress, Michelle? You said you've made a lot of these. Are, oh, really, Louise? Oh, okay. Thanks for telling me that. She said, Michelle, she said that a, a London shop she takes classes at, they often have the samples, a modded version. So, so that's cool. Good to know, good to know. Okay, I want to do this on the right side to the wrong side, right? Correct? If I do it wrong again, I'm blaming it on you guys. 
Oh my gosh, that's so funny, you guys. Really, I mean, I remember feeling that way, but I was really, really, you know, inexperienced, I feel like, too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, like, let, let's look at it this way. If, if you saw your, your friend, um, and she was, like, building a bookcase for the first time, um, and she made a mistake and she took out the nail, would you think of the backside of the hammer as a failure? You know? <laughs> it's just a thought. No one's watching us, right? I mean, you know, someone's watching me, you guys, right? You know, I've been to London a few times, and I was crap at finding the sewing scene. But the hammer is way faster. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so the sewing machine's pretty quick. I don't know. But yeah, you mean the back side of the hammer? I hate it when I have to take something out with a hammer. I mean, I definitely feel like, oh darn, I made a mistake, but I don't feel like I f failed yet, you know? I'm not a carpenter either. <laughs> so I expect to be using the back side of the hammer a lot. I gotta, I gotta nip this a little bit because of the bias. I probably don't need to as much, so I'm just gonna do a little bit. And then we're almost back on track. I hope it, le it, I mean, like, I, I'm really glad that, 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 that you feel that way now, Nancy. Um, but one thing I do hope you guys feel is that you don't, for the most part, don't walk away when there's a mistake. When there's a mistake, at least take it out and get it back to neutral. <laughs> they trim, um, it's a quarter inch seam allowance. Trim what? I'm not trimming. Really? They tell you to trim. I don't I don't hammer a line either, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, because I I do feel like like just to keep going on that point, um when I make a mistake and I wanna rage quit on it and walk away, sometimes I have to. Totally agree with that. But um, I tell you what, if I can sit there and take a deep breath and then take it apart and get it all ready to sew and then walk away, it's I will come back and sew it. You know what I mean? I'm going to continue on with the crooked nail. Oh, me too. You should see my little thing there. Um, yeah. Oh, you went to Ray Stitch. Okay. That's really cool. They have all the san san samples. <laughs> that's awesome Christy oh my gosh I would totally Louise I will take you up on that I, I've actually been over there a few times and I really like going I really love Edinburgh so I tend to get to Edinburgh um, so um, I would love that I would love a guide on that because I do feel like I fail when I'm looking for fabric. In fact, I've sort of um, stopped shopping for fabric when I go on vacation because I don't really have much left. So, you know, cloth house, what's cloth house? They sell their samples from time to time. Eee, look, this is my one that I used. I was about to say, oh no, it's not gonna fit, but it's the one I just took off, so. Nice, I could reuse this piece. That rarely happens. Oh, okay. Back at it. At least I didn't understitch it first, right? <laughs> then I would have gone with it. Yeah, exactly, Lisa. Neut get back to neutral, you know? Because then at least when you come back in, it's almost like the mistake didn't happen and you don't feel like it's a setback, you know? Yeah. Hey, right, Julia? 
Yeah, I do know that one too. When I went to, um, is that the shoulder? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna start here. When I went, so my husband travels a lot for work and it, we don't go with him very often because he goes to the same places pretty often. He goes to Germany a lot and I've been there a few times. Um, but when he went to, he had a show in Sydney, I was like, we are coming. Well, hello, Pam. You're so happy I'm teaching. This is what I'm gonna teach too, so don't tell anyone I'm sewing it right now. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like it, Lisa, right? I think because of the British sewing bee, you know? A sewing shopping UK trip for sewers. Ooh! If you did that, I would I would sign up. I really would. I would do it. Oh, so when we went to Australia, we were in Sydney for a, Sydney for a week, but then we didn't. So I only saw Sydney. I mean, which is awesome. <laughs> and um, then we spent the rest of our time in New Zealand, and I brought back way too much yarn. No, my husband's a sales director for Clean Canteen. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they make uh, vacuum insulated stainless steel, you know, like pint cups and drinking vessels. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I okay, Christy. I will let I you guys know. I'll totally let you know how my class goes. I'll be streaming the next day. So hopefully I'm like, because <laughs> I'm a little nervous. So yeah, because um, I, you know, I got a lot of feedback from one of the gals there who has taught a lot of garment classes, and she says, you know, I get I get so sidetracked and caught up with helping people fit the garment, and I said, yeah, but it's not a garment fitting class. I'm a I'm a I'm a hard ass, you guys. Well, it's not a garment fitting class, so why do you feel like that happens so I can kind of be prepared? Like, do people come and they're just like, I, this, I want this to fit a certain way, and they kind of make you feel that you have to help them? Is it that you've opened it up to them for that? You know what I mean? Or is it, um, is it that it's a tough-to-fit pattern? Like, why do people, because I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Secretly stream my class? Oh my gosh. If you can see my setup, there is no secret about what I'm doing in here. Like, it is such, it looks like such a mess of technology. You know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> We're all in, Louise. I'm serious. I'm serious. It is. Fit is a big time suck for class. Exactly. Okay. So he he does do trade shows, Marsha. Um, no, no, no. No, I know. That would be kind of cool, though, huh? Um, he studied in Germany. went to college there. So he does speak German um, very fluently. So he does a lot of the international shows for, for them. And then um, he like will talk to distributors and reps, um, not just going to the show. So... He, you know, he'll go to the show. Um, sometimes he stays the whole time, but sometimes he's actually traveling around the region talking to the people that he needs to interact with. He likes to travel a lot, so it's it's good. Yeah, right, Pam? Yeah, so I think this is what I'm going to say, that, that they need to have their... It's a tank top. There's only two pattern pieces. So I'm, I'm going to say that they need to have, um, have it cut out. So if they have it cut out, that already eliminates fitting it a lot. Yeah, Julia, exactly. The clean canteen chicken boots things. Yeah. So, um, but I'm going to definitely pass along this armhole modification that I just now did on the fly that Christy told me about because that is something we can do right there in class. We can sew up the shoulders and fit it that way, you know? So that, that'll be great. And I really wanted to pick a size inclusive pattern, but there, besides going just all out cashmere, which leaves out other folks, um, I, 
I there isn't any options. There's not both. There's Colette, but they're they're discontinuing since Colette discontinued all their print patterns. There's only a few left in the bin, so I can't teach a class on any of those. So I actually checked in there for you guys to see what Colette patterns they had, and it's none of the ones I've sewn lately. They do have the Hawthorne dress in there, and then they had a few other dresses. So if you're looking for Colette print patterns that you can't find on their website, you can try Honey Run Quilters. They might have the one you're looking for. They had a couple I've made myself, not here on stream, and then they've had they had a few that I hadn't made yet. So Oh, a quilter you're a Pam as well. That's awesome. Okay, so I finally got that on the inside. I'm not sure about this bias binding, but I did not want to use this uh, lumpy bumpy, um, I want to call it, I keep wanting to call it eyelet, but it's not eyelet. Just this embroidered fabric. I didn't want to use that as binding. That seemed like that would have been a struggle. Although I may have been able to get an inch through here. Maybe I should have used it. I didn't think about that. Oh well. So, Pam Club. <laughs> Um, do you guys use your iron for bias binding? Mine just wants to turn under, so I don't I don't feel the need to do the the iron for the bias. I do on the French seams. The band could be pretty small. I'm trying not to stretch out my armholes, to be honest, because it feels like because I left my bias a little loose, so that the bias would lay flat inside here um, that I could be stretching out my armholes. But in light of the fact of the fitting, maybe that would be okay. So I was wearing my Amelia dress yesterday at the fabric store. Oh yeah, that looks like shite right there. Oh, it's, it's okay. The, um, this fabric is kind of wrinkly. Yeah, Ugh, so over, overexposed. I like how laundered this looks, you know, this fabric. I see the, the, with the bias, whoop, you know. Oh, you like the same width. Yeah, yeah, I mean, is that not same enough for you? <laughs> On a quilt, I can see that. And there's my little, like, that's my back. So that works. So yeah, so as for my rules for you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to request that they cut out their, their garment. They don't have to cut out their bias. I can help them with that. Um, it's not even, though. I mean, like, if I were to really measure here, you can see. I, I mean, it, I have to tune out the stitching. Because the stitching, if I got a little wiggly right there, the bias is actually the same width right here, but the stitching came in a little. I feel like it's a little wide there. On the outside, do I really notice? The stitching looks pretty darn even on the outside. And you know, I should have picked white binding, you know? So, I'm gonna try it. I'm kinda curious how long it is. Can I try it on right now? <laughs> it's a little hard to get on and off over my dress. Let's try it. The dart's pretty good. I feel like, I feel like <laughs> those 1960s, like really stiff tank tops, because over my dress, it's really thick. So. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> now, the dart looks pretty good on me. Um, it, the end of the dart should always be about an inch away from the apex of your bosom. Not your nipple, but the fullest part of your bust. So it should be about an inch back off, is what they call call it. Okay, Pam, yeah, that's good to know. Make sure I mention it's not a fitting class. Really? To mention that? I do say, um, I'm gonna say, you know, please make sure that your pieces are cut out and um, go
go by your bust size when selecting which size because that's kind of a hint like you know one down two to go um, I can stick with my cream thread let's see how what this does to the camera you want that brighter Wait a second. I may have just opened two of those. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, okay. See, on one of the things that I do to, to adjust things, I have to double-click it to open it. And then I have to say configure video. But if I double-click that, it opens two of them. So it's confusing. Oh, she did. Ellen taught it to the class. That's awesome. Bye, Christy. Thank you. Have a good long weekend, you guys. Just cut and sew the top in three hours. And so what did she do with fitting? Tell me all. How much of a hard ass do I need to be? Okay, so this is a um, the dress. Let's do our, let's do our um, armhole modification right now, right now, right now. Oh, I forgot to do my, what's that? I forgot to do my, my uh, dart marking. Yay, Siobhan's back. This is the front, so it's a tiny bit more. And see, this might not be needed for some of the folks in the class. So. Ooh, nice, Pam. Have a nice weekend. So everyone knew what size they wanted to cut. Okay, wait, it's her new. Okay, wait, wait. She had them cut out, and she had a sample of every size for folks to try on. Very smart. It's her new pattern she's releasing in June. It's about the time they've, okay. So an arrow, okay, that's smart. So everyone knew what size they wanted to cut out. Was that her, um, is that how she does her pattern testing? Cause that's pretty cool. All right, let's do, um, let's find, let's find where my darts are. Not even a pattern piece I need. What, what, why did I bring that over? Oh, here it is. I did bring it over, it just fell. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. I know when she said um, it's bottle time, I almost made that. Uh, <laughs> I made that comment too, Lisa. That's so funny. I mean, when you're a mom, <laughs> both sometimes go hand in hand for folks. Oh, okay, all right. I lowered the armhole. And did everybody finish, Julia, and, and they got their size they wanted? It's nice to walk away with your garment finished, you know. Your family needs a new baby. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, can we tell the right and the wrong side of this fabric? Yeah, I actually think I can. I think this side is the wrong side. Okay. Good thing there's only a few pieces, right? Well, only one leg of my dart is marked. What the heck? Hmm.
Yeah, I think if I, I'm trying to think like how I, what I would assume if I went to a class, you know? Would I assume we would custom fit it to me or not? I don't know. I, I kind of struggle with how I feel about that. That's cool. So what's the, hi Amanda. So what is your class about? Is it a garment? And then they say we're gonna fit and cut it. You like how I just pulled out the pin before I was even anywhere near the end. Now I have to guess where it ends. Come on, Jeremy. These are such sturdy cottons. I just wanna back tack my darts, but you guys are watching and I know you'll tell on me if I back tag some. <laughs> Cal does classes that are very clearly custom fit. People want custom fit. Professional. Yeah, you have just a, a right, wrong sides together first for your French seam, Siobhan, and then you finish right sides together just like you would, right? Because that's your last one. This tank isn't a fit fit, exactly. <laughs> uh oh, are you, it looks like we're sending babies now. <laughs> Night, Louise, sleep well. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow, abiento. <laughs> you gave me my little pin. Oh wait, wait, what's the little pin tip again? What's the little pin tip? I forget stuff. I'm kind of like, you know, sensory overload. Okay, so this is my front and my back. Here we go. It feels smoother. Yeah, like I think like it is, um, oh right, I did, um, I did a center back seam on this, so. Need to sew the center back seam. And I'm not gonna do a French seam, so you guys are gonna have to forgive me. I think I'm going to do a, um, just a straight seam, and then I might, now I wish my binding machine, because this I would run through the binding machine. Um, I kinda want it to be raw until I'm ready, you know? They suggested two patterns, skirt, and pants. Everyone's picking pants, by the way. <laughs> oh, it's a six week class. Okay. And hi, I've been watching all week at work. That's awesome. I won't tell. <laughs> Welcome, I'm glad you're talking with us. Oh, right, you're going out to dinner tomorrow. All right, we'll see you Thursday, Louise. Sleep well. Um, okay, a six week Fitting class, great. Mine is a Friday night, 5 to 9 p.m. tank top. So no, I'm not doing custom fitting. And you know, um, I, I feel like it's also a really good opportunity to say, hey, this may end up being your muslin. You may have spent money on fabric and it may end up being your muslin. And you know, that is what it, what it takes to get good, fitting garments. We don't do it because it's cheaper or faster, right guys? It's, it's just kind of one of the necessary evils of, of sewing for yourself. But worth it, and then once you get the good fit, you know. But I think like if you're, if to teach a class on, oh, we're gonna make a custom block, that's a long class. That's a very much a long process class with people who have sewn a lot, you know? So, yeah, you should cover fit, fit over six weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you get up, he's exactly. All the fabrics I'm sewing today, it's like, what's the right side? I don't know. <laughs> oh, right, put a tiny seat, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
So I was thinking of just hemming this, um, of just hemming this or binding this edge. Because remember, this is extra. There's no center back seam on this tank. It's the one mod I'm doing because I really, yeah, exactly, Amanda. Because I think like if I could say, hey, you know, um, if people are very much come and they're like, look, I cut it out or I didn't cut it out because I'm really worried about the fit. I really want help with that. That's fine. I'm totally fine helping them, you know, like I'm not going to be like, sorry, get out of here, <laughs> you know, but um, I have a feeling the first round of people are going to have a few people that aren't new to sewing and they have sewn a few garments because um, just because just because of when I was there and they were talking with me. So I really need to figure out what to do here. Let's see. Maybe I will just. Let me see, can I do a little hem and will it fit? And then what would this look like? I have a little, hmm, 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 hmm. Should I bias bind it? I'm not doing a French seam because I really want to be able to adjust it later, you know? So, I think I'm gonna just bind it. That's my solution to everything. Just bind it. I'm kind of using this class as an opportunity to learn how to teach and see what people want and what they ask and how prepared they come, you know? Um, so I'm learning as, as well. And I'll probably say, state that to them. Because people would people say that this is what I'm doing here. I'm teaching you guys. But I'm not really. I'm just passing along how I do it. You know. <laughs> this is a, kind of a weird way to finish this. I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat that. I'm not, I'm not very comfortable with it either. Let me see. It looks okay. Yeah, I'm going to continue with this. This is, this is an experiment, you know? I just want a place to be able to um, fit my back. I want a back seam. And I don't think I'll be letting it out because there's not much room for that. Also, I plan on not modifying it past about right here because um, I'm gonna continue to sew this and I'm gonna put the whole like skirt on it and all that and the hem. So that limits what I can actually do after the fact. And so that's why I am going to leave it as easy to alter as possible. That's what I'm thinking. This is a way to also save fabric. I'm putting a back seam. So. All right. So now the back. It'll look like that. I like this, uh, I like this binding with it. <laughs> All right, so. I never saw Michelle's response about, you said that the armholes, they say to trim the armholes. <laughs> Yeah, right, Lisa? That's what I was thinking, too. And, you know, once you get a garment with a good armhole, it's pretty valuable. This is a sleeveless armhole, but there's still value in that. You can turn a sleeveless armhole into a, a armhole with a, for a sleeve, no problem. Just, like, basically what I've been doing with the 
making the armhole bigger. It's almost the same thing. You just go, you just need to go out and down. So. All right, I'm doing all my front seams. This fabric is a yarn dye, obviously. <laughs> Look at all those little threads coming out. <laughs> she wasn't teaching. She was approaching material together with students for their first time. I tried to get, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I know, I love flowers and stripes too. I've only got about a hundred bias bindings over there, but I always pick this one. I love it. I'll be sad when it's gone. I just love my little tiny prints so much. Oof, I got a little crooked there. trim this because we don't like furry seams right we need to iron it and then um, we'll finish these seams and then I put the skirt on which is fun I can't imagine this silhouette looking very good on me okay Amanda uh, but I feel like um, it could be a nice summer little thing to wear, you know? This railroad stripe is so soft. I'm doing a really bad job <laughs> doing it. All right, let me iron this real quick. Sorry, the iron cam is still out of commission. Maybe tomorrow it won't be. It'll be fixed after the stream. Okay, I gotta warm that up, so I'll do my skirt seams. Has anyone made the Willow Tank dress? I meant to look at the hashtag. Dang, I forgot. What am I getting myself into? Did, have you guys seen that patchwork version of the, um, of the Willow Tank dress? Or Willow Tank? It's really cute. I think the quilters would like that. All right, so I did my stripes the opposite direction for the skirt. Because I didn't buy this fabric to make this, and so I didn't quite have enough. <clears throat> and I'm actually really liking the idea of this now even better. Because I was kind of like, woo, these stripes are kind of crazy. But um, I think as a... Um, a little bit of visual interest on the hem will help. You know, so. Yeah, have you seen? Yeah, you saw it too, Pam? Yeah. Yeah, so if, if you look up the Willow Tank, hashtag Willow Tank, it's one of the first ones up there. It's getting a lot of likes. And it's got like brown and blue patches of fabric. It's cute. It makes me want to like stash but best, you know what I mean? Like do a, um, oh, I just ran out of bobbin, I think. Hope that's what that was. Yeah, I just ran out of bobbin. I don't have cream on, so I better remember to wind a bobbin later. Cause I'll be bummed if I don't.
Have you been to the fabric store lately, Pam? Like, did you see that new stuff they got yesterday? That's all um, stitched. Like, it's like stitched. Yeah, Bobby Clover. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Bobby Clover. Um, it's really cute. I'm definitely going to get some of it. <laughs> I say that because I'm like, it's $30 a yard. <laughs> but I want it. There was two of them. And I want the one that's not the patchwork, I think. Um, Cause I didn't see it all unfolded, but um, I like the colors of it so much. I don't know what I would do with it. Make a nice Tamarack, honestly, but I don't want a Tamarack. <laughs> you need one of those, Julia? I know. I know, it's so cute. And that's this pattern. Inspiring, huh? Maybe I should print out a few um, Instagram. Can I do that? Can I print out like people's Instagram hashtag thing and then post a little that with my with my um, display, you guys think? That's okay, right? I don't wanna break any rules. Okay, now let me iron. iron. This is looking a little prison-ish. Huh, I don't know. Right, teacher discount, I know. I didn't know about that. That'll be helpful for my stream. <laughs> oh, I need to add water to this. steam Oh, good night, Siobhan. We'll see you later. Thanks for coming. Lauren's making a patchwork bomber jacket. Who's Lauren? Which one is she making?
Last team. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> yeah. You can't post links on Instagram, but you can share Instagram posts elsewhere. What do you mean? Oh, I know you can't post links. That's always been a constant frustration. You know, they you couldn't always post a link in your profile. That's like somewhat new. That was awesome when they did that. And no, I am not matching these stripes. Elba, Lauren Elba. Oh, Elba Textiles. There's a free one on Mood Fabric. So um, one of the, the gal who uh, teaches some of the garment classes at my fabric store, um, Rebecca, she's making a, a bomber. And it's by Jolly Patterns. And I've heard of the Rigel bomber. Who does the Rigel? That sounds like something Closet Case would name. This thing's kind of big. It's probably good. I want it to be kind of loose. <gasps> pockets! I might add patch pockets to the, no. Okay, I don't know how, I need to see how this looks before I just add pockets, so. Also, the seam allowance, I am um, not quite accurate right now with these French seams. That's awesome. I like that guy. I remember watching him on Project Runway when he was first on there. Okay. Well, I didn't really follow the uh, seam allowances, so it better have gosh darn caught on all of the edges. <laughs> I think my tank just got a little smaller. All right, so now this has a, a pleat detail. See right here? So that's what I'm making. So here's my dress. Let's put it right sides out. Did I do all those? Um, let's see, front back. So I think that this seam gets, I need to walk myself through it, see if it gets enclosed. Um, I haven't watched Project One Way for a few seasons, so I don't know what it's like anymore. I, I, it kind of, it's, it was very hit and miss, like it, it was very consistent and then all of a sudden it just disappeared for a while and then I, I heard it came back and so I watched it and then it was um, hit and miss and so I just didn't even know it was still playing there. Like I didn't even know it was still, they still had it for a while, you know, like I missed some seasons. I was pretty bummed. Okay, so I've got my, my uh, tank inside the skirt and I'm lining up the waist seam here. So you can see there's my back. Um, and then once I do that, then I feel like, no, I don't think it does get caught in there. So, um, 
I'm gonna sneeze. It's like my allergies are kind of bad here. Christian's the new Tim Gunn. Oh my god, that's awesome. That's perfect. So I don't think I can do this as a um, French seam. So this is good. I'm really glad I'm walking myself through this, you guys, because when I have a class, I gotta know these things. So I may need to bind it. Yeah, and he didn't even, I don't think he won his season either because I wanted him to win. It's probably the only reality show I ever got into besides live streams. I'm kind of excited to see how this comes together here. So let's see if I could have done a um, French seam. I'm curious. Yeah, right? And he's not a size snob, exactly. The new Heidi has great taste. Who's the new Heidi? I liked Heidi, but she didn't make the show for me. <laughs> okay, so how do I do this? So you pleat it, and then... Let's look at the directions. Fold the bodice along the fold line marked on your pattern. Okay. Fold line. Okay. The seam line you stitched in step four will align with the stitching line marked on the pattern. Pin in place and stitch around the dress through all layers following the stitching line. Okay. Okay. I got it. I'm gonna go this way. I was gonna do it through the neckline, neck hole. It sound Nancy sounds like she sees it on Hulu once the season's done. Carly Kloss is the new, I don't know who that is. Oh my gosh. Uh, sorry, I got a little mess going on here. <laughs> okay, so here is my, I just put it back to the way I sewed it. And now uh, apparently when I sew the pleat, all I do is fold it up along the pleat line, which now is missing because, you know, I did my French seam. So you gotta kinda either mark it with chalk or find it because I can kind of feel there's a shape there that's what I'm feeling for right now but it will also line up um, you're gonna stitch along the act the stitching line you just stitched so so I'm just gonna do this and see if I can get it to kind of line up naturally does feel a little bit like you're sewing blind, kind of in a blind spot. I'm gonna pin it so it stays there. Pie, oh, here we go. Okay. So then I think I stitch right on top of that, leaving the seam allowance free. <laughs> I'm still doubting it. That's kind of an this is kind of an interesting way to do this. Right? 
But then they show the dress. They show the dress like folded out. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing, but I'm not sure at all. I'm just going to check all my width around like this. This is the scientific way, you know? Yeah, that's true. I'm so behind on TV. If any, if I'm gonna catch up on anything, it's all of PBS because I, I love PBS so much. Is this really the width? When in doubt. Yeah, right? Cool, okay, making sure. Making sure. All right. So, best thing to do is try and make this as logical as possible so that it's easy for others to understand, right? So that's why we're all walking through this. <laughs> oh, I know, I saw that down Nabby movie trailer finally yesterday. It's not the hem, there's a pleat in the waist. Right here. So literally this is the same pattern piece. Like you can, you just don't cut out the skirt for the tank. And um, then you add this little pleat at the waist, which I used as a visual interest to make the stripes go the other direction to save fabric. Crafty, eh? Slow fashion retreat, which one's that? Is that like a squam thing? All right, let's see, did I get it? Oh, no, I didn't, okay. A little bit more. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Kind of a drop waist look, exactly, with the pleat, which I'm not usually that into. A gathering of stitches, oh cool. All right, so let's see if I do this right. And then it's hemming and binding again. Start on the side seam. I turn the garment so that um, I'm on the inside curve here, like I like. All right, so I just stitched that, huh? This feels kind of weird. Oh, she's hosting miniature rhino and cow patch. Cool. You don't like cow like this. <laughs> we hear ya. All right, I think I'm following the directions the way they're written. Why does that look a different width there, though? The stripes are doing something funny with my eyes right now. I'm just stitching on the original stitch line. I'm going to uh, label my samples for the shop, too, what size they are, so that... Um, if someone is like this size or smaller, they can try it on and get a good idea. I don't mind if they try it on. Did I, okay. I can't tell if I've already sewn here because it's already stitched. It's kind of funny. I'm doing this wrong. I've got to be doing this wrong. I'm 
right? I'm having trouble picturing if the pleat's gonna show. I feel like I just made a pleat on the inside. Right? Tell me I'm... Yeah, see, look. That's not a pleat. That's not it. Okay, so what, why? That's the wrong side of the garment. I checked. And look, there's the darts, okay? Okay, look at that. So doesn't that look like you stitch on the inside? But see, the pleat's not showing, so that's my tip. So how do you sew that? Good thing we're learning how to do it now. All right, so um, get your wine glass out, Nancy. Yeah, it's a pleat that is on the outside of the garment, but I'm not getting the hang of <laughs> how to do it. <laughs> it is kind of a fascinating pattern. It kind of borders line, like I'm like, okay, did, is this just to offer a a uh, option, but um, I do like this option, so I feel like it's a good idea, but it's not. Sewing it isn't intuitive for me. I can picture it, but it's not how I would have, I think my my brain is get, is fighting the way, yeah, the way you have to uh, put it together. Like I would have drafted it maybe differently, but I don't know what I would have done differently because I haven't thought about it that far. <laughs> My husband made me a martini last night. It was pretty good. I haven't had one of those in a while. He likes, and I do too, these really spicy dilly beans. You know, like pickled um, green beans. And that's what he puts inside. So for me, it's all about those dilly beans. And like, I'll get... I'll get to the end of my martini and those are gone. And I look at his and he has those to eat left. You know? You need to create a keyboard command. Oh my gosh, you're getting fancy. Can you really do that? Oh, sorry guys. Sorry if you're sewing along with me, world, and um should have joined live. <laughs> I know the um yeah it hi Wendy it it is a little bit uh doing something funny with my eyes when I was ironing it. I was like, ooh, this is not a good camera fabric. It's why I haven't sewn it. I've really been looking forward to having using this fabric in my garment. And then I was like, I don't think I could do that on camera. Good thing I'm making a couple others. So, I'm almost there, guys, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost there. So, are you guys doing anything for Memorial Day weekend? I'll be finishing the Colette Myrna tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific, and then... Um, and then I got my tech person coming to work on my setup, which is pretty exciting. I hope he can do something for the cameras. <laughs> you better send now you're <laughs> so I'm swelling it down, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, just when it moves a lot, I bet it is kind of crazy. Try and shake it off camera. Here we go, just a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, you you always see that on like um like local news stations. And they'll wear that guy will wear that one tie and the tie is just like me. <laughs> you never see that on like really big news stations, just uh like the local ones. They're still getting the hang of what to wear on camera. Alright, so um There's my start stop. Okay. 
And there's a pin there. Okay, so um, you don't pin it from the inside. Oh, you're making a, a cornhole game. Oh, cute. Like this right now for me, and out of the corner of my eye, it's going, you know. That would be cute. Okay, so why did they show that inside out for this part? So it goes like this, and you pleat it. But then you sew it from the outside. And they say to use the stitching line as your guide. I hope Green Line's not watching and going, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you make bean bag. That'll be cute from their footies. That'll be really fun. When the weather girls wear green and disappear in front of the green screen, right? I thought about getting a green screen, it would be fun, because then you would have more um, sewing surface, you know? You would see more sewing surface. You're getting a haircut and finishing the last four weighted blankets from a server. Oh, cool. So you're not going out of town either. All right, so, um, so why are they showing this from the inside when you need to sew it from the outside? I just can't. can't imagine. So that you're supposed to stitch in that stitching line, right? You know what I want to do? I want to poke this in there though. I'm going to press that seam up and then enclose it in. I'm going to press that up. Then I don't need to worry about the um, lack of a French seam right there. So at least I solved one issue. Okay. You really part of me using my library letter. I can't even fill all the cubbies. I moved the lab rat ladder out of the way the other day. It made a terrible rocket when I did it because I didn't have it quite right. Alright, so um so now so what I just did was I pressed my waist seam of the skirt going up. See? And now what I'm thinking is when I make the pleat on the outside, I'm going to enclose that seam like this, and then I'll have my pleat. That's my plan. So I think like, let's see. I have to, I'm having trouble figuring out how to position it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the skirt into the um, dress. Because I want to sew this from the, from the side of the skirt so that I can see the seam. And then that way it'll be easier to line up the um, stitching on right onto it. Right? Okay, so I'm going to find that fold line of the, the pleat all the way around. I'm just going my side seams. I'm kind of looking for the shape because it kind of wants to fold there. And then I'm just kind of doing this, you know. 
And let's see how even it is already. But it's just doing some crazy stripe stuff. So pressing this would be make it a little easier. So let's do that. I got a little off here. Pam, hey Madre, are you still here? Because I had some, I don't know if you were here from the beginning, but I do have good news. There's just so long on their blog for this part for when I try this later. Oh, that's great. This I feel like is easier the way I just the way I figured it out. So I put the skirt inside of the dress. So this is the skirt. You can see it here. Kind of helps that my stripes go the other way for the skirt. And then um, I press the skirt seam allowance up into the bodice. And then I just ironed it along the pleat edge. And I'm going to sew it from the skirt seam side. And hopefully I got it nice and even. And that's it. That's good to know, Nancy, because I was thinking about that when I do my chicken boots patterns, if I should do a sew along. This is going to be under underneath the pleat so you can't see it. You're looking at your copy of the pattern. I feel like I saw it when I when I saw it earlier. I was like, huh. Um, I can tell there's something about these instructions here that I need to like. I need to have the pattern pieces in my hands um, to figure out what they're doing there. But it took me also sewing it wrong to realize what I was doing wrong. All right, so now when I pull my skirt out from the bottom, because we're looking at the right side of my dress, I should have a nice little pleat there. Ta-da! Like that. So like that. It looks really terrible on that camera. <laughs> You hear? Oh, so um, Pam, I wanted to tell you that my parents found a house. Yeah, and they got their keys um, on a Tuesday afternoon, and they and they're moving in. So I can tell it's not like they're not like it's not our home, but they're still really excited. So this way, the line of stitching is hidden. But I have to say, I have said what whatever. I don't understand. How could that have been invisible? There's no way that could have been invisible. It could have been a seam. But you know what I did now is um, my inseam, the, the waist seam is um, clean finished. So let me just press it really quick here. Fabric is so nice to sew. Okay. 
This way the line of stitching is hidden. I had to say, would have said that, said whatever, make the pleat on the right side. Well, it's supposed to have a pleat on the right side. So was I supposed to do it like right sides together? I don't know. Okay, so um, I'm gonna hem it. I'm not even gonna check. I'm just gonna hem it and then um, I can always shorten it if I want later. Look at all these threads though. From the wrong side. I'm gonna have to sew that again. I'm missing something. Like mentally, it's it's like a block for me. Some crazy origami crap. All right, so the my way is tighter, huh? So so would it have looked the same either way? Is there stitching? Thanks, Pam. So is there stitching showing on the outside either way it's sewn, like if I sew it my way or if I sew it their way? Or is there, or is it a seam? But there's no seam allowance, so there can't be a seam there. Hmm. Um, well, I'm really glad I don't have to explain have to, how to sew that in written instructions. <laughs> so, I guess that's one thing to be thankful for. Where's the back? Okay, there, wait, that's the back. This is looking like a prison dress, by the way. No stitching, there, so it would be a seam. Huh. I don't believe you. <laughs> So I figured it out. Well, you guys, I'm finally stumped. You finally see me stumped. I literally can't think of another way to sew that from the inside. Because you if you if it was, you'd be sewing it blind. Nobody wants to sew it blind. It's not orange. <laughs> True. It's an old timey prison jumper. Promise I cut it on grain, but the stripes are looking a little not so on grain, huh? But there, I, uh, I can't remember if there's a shape at the on the hem. Sorry, I marked full line. Yeah, I see that, but they show that on the wrong side. They show that on the wrong side, so that means to me that you would fold it on the wrong side. Like, why not show the pleats on the outside? Either way, right? Otherwise, there's no reason to have the pleat. So if they're showing from the wrong side, it shows to, to me, I would think I'm making the pleat on the wrong side, which now I realize is wrong, right? You know, um, because we want to show on the right side. <laughs> so let's see. I'm gonna have to cut a miniature and figure it out because now I'm kind of boggled. All right, I'm gonna just bind like one armhole and then go to my next one so you guys don't, <laughs> I don't lose you guys. Wear it with a ball and chain. <laughs> exactly. Maybe a name, maybe I'll just hold a um, ID number in front while I walk around. <laughs> okay, so I start on the right side and go to the wrong side. What? Or should I put this on the, it's like a gunny sack. Should I show, make this show? I 
kind of don't like how modest the neckline is in the back. Um, what do you guys think? Should I... Either way, it looks the same. <laughs> Um, should I have the flowers on the inside or the outside? Looks better in person. <laughs> yep, <laughs> little tiny prison jumper. <laughs> you match the inside seam line to the other inside seam line, wrong sides together, you get the same result that you got. Hmm. So you, they have you hike up the skirt two inches on the inside. And so a line inside over your previous. Thing. So you have to do it kind of blind then. I don't like that. Can I do it my way? I don't know if Gunny Sack's still in business. Was it? That's awesome. All right, what do you guys think? Flowers um, on the outside? I think so. I think I need to break up the stripes. Like in person as opposed to the screen. All right, well, um, I'm gonna try and figure out their, their method. I, I just need to probably not do it while I'm like talking and filming and then it'll be more obvious. And then, um, and then I'll see what I think. Cause I want it to be whatever's the most easy to understand for people sewing it. I mean, I like that my way clean finishes it. Hi, Isabel, how's it going? Oh, you want the flowers on the inside? You don't want to be pretty rich. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, I'll put the flowers on the inside. I got two votes. Prison dresses did not have flowers on the, gosh, my prison wood, just saying. Flowers on the outside is good. Now Lisa says on the outside is good. It'll be more versatile with them on the inside, so I get that. I have a few threads sticking out there. I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna do one, and then I'm gonna move on to my last uh, tank because that one's on the bias, um, so it's a little different. I don't think the fabric will make us as dizzy. And I, I did a keyhole neckline, so I want you guys to see that because I think that's a nice detail and it's really easy to add to anything. You know what I mean? Not flowers on the outside. Okay, Sandy. Okay, I'm getting the people lurking, commenting. Okay. I just want you to know it looks better in person. <laughs> you like the flowers on the outside? <laughs> you were the one who said that it can't be a pretty person dress. <laughs> Nothing like bringing about controversy to get you guys chatting. <laughs> okay, there we go. Just gonna see where's the armholes down here. So I'm just gonna clip the bottom of the armhole. The top is a little, is flat enough that I don't really need to clip it. Make my seam allowance even. And this is where Michelle said that they have you trim down the armhole, but I don't really know why, because it's the right seam allowance. So I'm gonna understitch it now. Yeah, Jessica McClintock, exactly. Grade it because more steps. <laughs> No, <laughs> I clipped it, I'm done. Ooh, what's that? Oh, I have some of my um, French seam threads coming through the seam there. Let's get rid of some of those. I may have to go back and look at some of those because this fabric was so thready. I have, a, I have a feeling I have a few, I have more than a few threads poking out. I'm not sentimental either. I think I know where my dress is. And it was interesting because when my parents were evacuated for the fire, 
They started evacuating near my neighborhood. We we live like 40 minutes apart, but but uh, the fire was just going crazy, and we none of us could figure out where it was. You know, like we were all in the dark, and um, they were evacuating near me, really close to me, and so I started like picking what I wanted to take. And um, I did get my wedding dress out. So I was more sentimental than I thought. Pretty sure I got my wedding dress out. And then um, it turns out they were only evacuating near me because they were doing controlled burns. So I was, we were kind of surprised we were, un, we were under threat, but we weren't. So would have been nice to know that at the time. Okay, so um, do one armhole. If anyone wants binding help, I have a couple of videos on how to cut it and how to sew it a few different ways, quite a few different ways. Oh, this binding is um, not one inch, so I need to trim it down. I need to trim it down a little bit. I'm gonna trim three eighths off this because this binding is a one and three eighths inch cut. They recommend cutting one inch binding and it is a little easier to deal with when you're only going to be doing it to the inside of the, the edge. You'd probably grab your sewing machine. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, I would have just lost it, my whole business. <laughs> But my my that they weren't vacuuming near there. Oh really? Are you near me, Lisa? Are you in the um, Chico area? I'm sorry to hear that. Very sorry to hear that. It's nothing like seeing your mom go through that. I bet. Just trust me. I oh, know. All right. I get it going and then I start arranging. I trimmed this a, a little bit narrow right there. <laughs> so that's why Sarah me should use a ruler. Okay. This stripe fabric is, is really nice to sew with. Um, it presses really nicely. It, you know, when anytime you're using a yarn dye, yarn dyes, they tend to just like, the grain line works better on them for some reason. You know what I mean? It's easier to cut them on grain and um, they just behave better. Plus, now I have something for when I go to jail. I mean, if I could sew, it wouldn't be so bad. They'd make me run a sweatshop, I bet. Okay. All right. So there's one armhole. And remember, I have the center back seam because I want to adjust the back waist. Oh, that, this camera looks terrible with this dress. So, sorry, I'll have to take a picture. Oh, you're Wisconsin, okay. And your mother-in-law was in Santa Rosa. Yes, that fire. Oh, yeah. Quality for jail, exactly. Okay, one more, one more of these. You've seen this fabric before. Yeah, I have friends that were in that fire too, Lisa. Oh, shoot. I need this bobbin for tomorrow. Lint lava. <laughs> and I just swept too. <laughs> Prison sewing gloves, right? I don't know, Nancy. <laughs> but, you know, I watched a few seasons of Orange is the New Black, and I got to the, the season where she actually was sewing, like, um, lingerie or something, right? And I remember thinking, oh, this isn't so bad. <laughs> My idea of um, what's not so bad. <laughs> I could sew for 10 hours a day? Okay. 
I remember thinking, wow, they got all those industrial machines for the, for the set, you know? Like I was like scoping them out. You know, they were like, dang, these props are heavy. <laughs> Oh, she only got out with one of her two cats. Oh, I thought you said one or two. Like you didn't know how many cats she had. Oh. Yeah. Tough stuff. Tough stuff. Yeah, exactly. They were selling lingerie. That's what I thought. Wait. <laughs> used, yeah, they were selling used pants. Yeah, that's right, they were. All right, um, let's do the, I'm gonna do my darts first. This fabric, okay, I did not need to cut this one on the bias. One, aw, one cat ran away inside. Hmm, poor thing, thing. I mean, your poor mom, too. We feel so responsible for our pets, you know? So I, I know she probably blamed herself, you know? Okay, let's see. This fabric really didn't need to be on the bias. It's very bouncy um, linen. I had a devil of a time trying to keep it so that the... Um, Plaid, the, the like lines, I was being symmetrical. So if I get that one person someday that's like, you know, you didn't cut this very straight. Um, <laughs> um, I'll just say you try it. Because uh, I sat there trying to like get the, the, um, between the bias and the linen being so like bouncy and fluffy and just stretchy in general. So I'm doing my darts first. I need to get it to where, the point where I can do my shoulders at least so I can show you the keyhole because I'll, I'll want to be able to buy in the neckline right away once I do it because I want it to st I want to stabilize it. Try not to pull this at all. Yeah, I didn't continue on with Orange is the New Black. I find so many TV shows, they're really good at first, and then they get really manipulative on the audience. Like they, they kind of yank you around in a little like roller coaster ride, and I, I don't appreciate that, you know? <laughs> Nancy, I know. It's because of the delay. We kind of bounce around a little bit. So here's my, see, here's my neckline keyhole. Right? And then I do have a um, back neck seam on this as well. But I think what I'll do is I'm going to sew this, hmm. I'm gonna sew this as a, um, French seam part of the way. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna leave the bottom open because I'm gonna fit it off camera and then I'll do the hem later. See, look at this. this I've spent a lot of time trying to cut this out so that I could match the plaid in the back, which is gonna be impossible. So I'm gonna sew the, the first seam all the way and I'm gonna sew the top the French seam for the top for part of it. Yeah, right, Amanda? Mother Nature doesn't match stripes. You don't have to either. <laughs> Are you guys Game of Thrones fans? What did you guys think? I watched it. I read the books, too, a long time ago. And then... Um, like long time ago, meaning like way before the like show caught up with it, and then then they the show went past the books, which I thought was really interesting, and I actually liked what they did. 
But um, I wasn't a fan of this season. And I'm usually not a very... I'm Well, I was about to say I'm not very critical, but people around me would be like, yeah, you are. Um, yeah, but uh, it just felt kind of odd to me. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to do the... the um, oh, yeah, so this isn't going to match in certain places. Oh, it matches down there. Maybe I can get it to match on the outside. Let's see. Oof. I'll have to kind of pull it along there. This is the inside of the garment. So it doesn't need to match, you know? I'm gonna get down to kind of uh, past the shoulder, my shoulder blades. Should have pressed that. And I'm gonna stop soon here. Let's see. Okay, so now I have part of my French seam down the center back. Ooh, those don't match very good. <clears throat> Kind of amazing he hasn't finished those books, eh? <laughs> I can't imagine how the pressure <laughs> would be kind of intense. All right, wrong sides together. Let's get to my binding of my neckline. It didn't match the shoulder seam, uh, the shoulder plaids. I focused on the side seams best I could, and it was still kind of hard. It would have been easier on the straight grain, but on the bias, it is all over the place, you know? <laughs> So what'd you think of the series, Lisa? Did you like it? The first few were so um, bodice ripping, <laughs> which I know a lot of people love, but I was kind of like, you know, I'm not even a prude, but I was just like, eh, you know, who's this for? So get to the story. I listened to those books. I read the, I started reading the first one. I, I read, I listened to a lot of books. Like mostly I listen to books. So there's that. Um, it's like the thing I have. And um, it works well when I'm sewing. You know, I, I can actually um, get a lot of books read be, when I was production sewing. I know I'm not pressing my seams. Hopefully Louise isn't saying tisk tisk. I'm trying to hurry up so you guys can get going. So let's do my little neckline finish. And so I started reading those and I was instantly like, oh boy, uh, the names in this book, I'm not sure I will be able to keep up. So I decided to um, read or listen to them instead. Okay, the, this is the right side. This is the wrong side. All right, so here's my little keyhole. So when you make these little keyhole, I made mine three inches deep and about an inch across. And because I'm going to bias bind the edge, meaning it's going to be double fold on um, the inside and the outside, this width isn't going to change. So in other words, it's not going to get turned back further like we've been doing on the armhole and the neckline binding today so far. I'm going to straddle the edge rather than it being all in the inside. And my bias binding is too narrow for that. So I'm going to have to do a really, because I ended up cutting it to what they said to do, um, forgetting I was doing that. So I'm just going to do a really small seam allowance and it'll be totally fine. And I just kind of eyeballed my uh, depth and width based on 
another shirt I had and what I like and what I don't like. But you definitely want to make sure you get it spot on in the center if you do cut a little keyhole. Because otherwise it'll look weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lisa. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I have my first pass there. And um, I don't need to clip the curve because it actually doesn't need to spread there. So that's okay. We don't need to clip it. And I wouldn't just because it'll keep it. Um, oh, this bias binding is just not wide enough. I can't. I don't know if I can do it. I could do it if it was going to the inside. I need to cut a little piece of bias binding, you guys. Let me take this out. If I were doing maybe a eighth of an inch seam allowance, which I'm not going to do. I don't think I'm good enough for that on this whooshy bias cut linen. <laughs> Let's take this off, get it to ground zero, I'll cut a little piece of binding just for this. I'm trying to decide, I, I think actually I want to, I wanted my bias binding to show on the edge for all of this, so I kinda need to cut more then. So I'll be right back, don't go anywhere. do one more just to make sure Kidding? Don't take my steam ripper away from me. I need that thing. It's my one of my best friends. I had I kind of fussy cut my bias. That's why it took me a while. Nothing like fussy cutting your bias, right? Okay, so wrong side to right side. Let's start this over again here. 
Got my one and three eighths inch wide bias because uh, straddling the edge will be a lot easier. I gotta lift my presser foot up a lot as I walk around this curve. Sorry, it's a little loud. It's so funny how my old machine did not make that much racket going up and down, you know? It's weird that this one's so much louder. Okay. Now I really could have fussy cut this binding so that I got the X's, you know, not the X's, like the intersections right there on the edge, but I didn't do that. I just made sure that it was all exactly the same so that when I sewed it together, it would be consistent since it's going to show, since it's on the outside too. All right, so now that's my little keyhole. It's gonna go like that. And now I can do my neckline. Kind of goes like this. Kind of chained them together. Okay, so let me uh, piece this together. Let's see, is that the right? Kinda. Let's see if this one's better. You yeah. know. Um. I might need more for the armholes. Like I said, I have I have a video that explains how I piece it together and sew it. And it's pretty short. The one sewing binding, um, a few different ways. You can fast forward and skip around and look for the one that you need. Um, it's a little bit longer, but cutting the binding, I do it pretty quick. Yeah, I just did a three inch deep and then one inch wide at the base, kind of. And I just make sure it was in the center of the garment so that it didn't get wonky. And then uh, made sure that the curve was symmetrical because that ended up being a little bit trickier. All right, so I'm starting on the wrong side. I'm gonna start on the back neck. My side seams aren't sewn, so it's kind of a, a big old flippy garment. Trying also not to get it um, stretched out at all. Since it's on the bias. Well, I definitely learned some things that I wanna make sure I, you know, I'm glad I know for the class, right, that I'm going to teach because I really want people to succeed. And I knew that even if it was a simple garment, simple garments can have a lot of details that can be a lot of work for people. So they could bring their serger and not do French seams, you know. I wish I, I would have... Um, Laid my uh, bodice out better, but I didn't. I have really got it in a weird shape here. Like on the under the machine needle. I'm having to keep it out of the way under there because I was in a hurry. And look at that, I put my, oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, 
Let me get away from here. I have my bias on backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking like an amateur. I'm sorry. I cannot at all tell the life of, for the life of me, tell the difference between the right and the wrong side on this fabric. It's the second garment I've made with it. I cannot tell. Everyone left when we went to the Gaming Thrones, right? <laughs> nah, I'm not going to talk TV. They like the prison jumper talk, you know? Oh, I should have fixed this when I... Like this. This is what I want. I want to be sewing from the inside of like this. Way better. See that? All nice and flat. Yeah. I'm a big Big Bang Theory fan. I was really sad that it ended. But I understand. I wasn't nearly, like, I wasn't sad at all about Game of Thrones. Like, it ran its course, you know? But Big Bang Theory, that could go on forever. I love that show. Okay. This is what happens. I start rushing because I'm like, I know I shouldn't be streaming right now. And you guys are all nice to come and watch me sew my samples. This is looking good, though. You're welcome to leave, it's okay. All right, so let's just finish. I'm only gonna finish my neckline and then I'll call it a day because you guys saw me do the side seams and the hem already. We don't need to go over that again. Um, and I'm almost done with my samples, so I thank you guys for that, that's great. Because that will be, I need to drop those off. I'm gonna use my awl kind of dark. Is it dark for you guys? Let me just brighten it up. It's very dark for me. A little better, huh? You're still here, Julia. <laughs> I got the best watermelon the other day. So relieved. Because I've had three already and they've been, they've been okay, you know? As most people think watermelons are, you know? They're like, oh, they're so hit and miss. But they're just literally, I could not find one in the bin that I knew was gonna be okay. So I knew it was gonna be mediocre anyway, but I still wanted to kick off with a good a watermelon, you know? And when I saw them in the bin the other day, I was like, oh, I think they're finally here. And they, it, I got a really good one. That was my little snack I had before I started. It's still a little narrow and because of the um, bias, it makes it narrower, you know? <laughs> That's right, because you're you are you are up all night, huh, Nancy? That's a, a popular thing in the gaming world is they'll work up to do a 24 hour stream. I could not do that. What I love about linen is when you fold it over, it just, it's just like, it's a crisp edge and it stays, you know? Brooke and you had a good one last week. Oh, a watermelon. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm, 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 I'm really good at picking them out now. But I can tell sometimes when I'm like, oh, they're not good today, but I don't want to walk away without one because I'll literally go to the store just for a watermelon. I eat so much of it. Watermelon and ice cream is life. 
What I'm doing, I'm trimming my seam allowance in there, just so you guys know, because I can tell my bias is a little narrow in places. And um, I didn't really do that because I kind of glanced at the neckline and I was like, ah, it looks pretty good. But um, I should have known better because linen can be a little bit fussier. It's like, it's very um, stable in some ways because like I said, it's got a nice crisp edge because it's a linen. So when you fold it, it's like, yes, I want to fold and stay like this forever. Hence why we get wrinkles in it, right? So in that capacity, it's actually really great to sew with. But in the other is that it's a very open weave and it gets a little bit, you know, so. <laughs> oh, you took tonight off. So you're going home instead of going to work. Nice. Your sons do the gaming streams. What do they play? I'm curious. We were talking gaming a lot the other day. I was kind of surprised how many of you game pleasantly surprised since that's what I do that's why I'm behind on TV that was my quip when they signed me up for the class I was like this is gonna cut into my gaming <laughs> five to nine on a Friday night what are you thinking I'm kind of thinking that um, some folks will finish earlier than others as well and they may be motivated because it's a Friday night and it's late why, why did I do that? So when I started sewing this, I started sewing it without folding that over there. Now I'm going to take out these little bit of stitches. This is just lint. Because I want this to go under that. I'm not going to fold it on top of it. That would be kind of, um, that wouldn't be a very nice detail. So let's take this out. So dark. <laughs> Gary's ma, I don't know what that is. Linen is a little work, work, work. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't realize how many sound effects I do until um, someone will imitate me. I'm like, I didn't do that. <laughs> Blame it on my mom. So let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's a nice detail. I like that. Classy. Can you see that? Give it a good press. It'll lay pretty flat. doesn't look like it's flat but it is especially once it's been washed like Alan Mason says you know wash it and then it's done and we're even looking at the wrong side here's the right side <laughs> there we go <laughs> pretty cute I love keyhole yeah, so all I did, Julia, was um, it's three inches deep and about an inch wide at the bottom. And because I did the binding on the edge rather than to the inside of the garment, it's not going to get any wider than that. So if you plan on doing the binding to the inside of the garment, then you would want to make it less than an inch wide, probably like a half inch wide, because because once it the seam allowance turns back, it'll get that inch. Um, and then, yeah, so then I just made sure it was dead center so it didn't look like, you know. And then, yeah, I just bound it on the edge and then I bound the neckline on the edge. And this pattern calls for binding it to the inside of the garment. So I could have inadvertently made my neckline a little bit closer at the top. This, fab this one is um, cu cut on the bias. So it does have that kind of wishy wishiness to it. All right, so I've got my blue, blue one, my stripe one. <laughs> and my white one. Ooh, that's right. Let's cover that one up. So I've got three samples, all kind of different a little bit from each other. 
So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, maybe I can finish them up tomorrow morning before I stream the Myrna. We'll finish the Colette Myrna tomorrow. I got my zipper today. I had to go somewhere else. Kind of a bummer, but I got a few extra. And I got my Upton zippers as well. I really blew out the camera for the blue. <laughs> so, um... Hope I see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. All my times now are 11 a.m. except these surprise streams. And hopefully we finish the Myrna. The guy's coming like two-ish. Um, that gives me three hours, which is a long time. But at the same time, I may have to end early if he gets here because I really want my cameras to be able to be all working. So, okay guys, well, thanks for coming. You can't hung out with me for a while. But I feel like if I can make three of these in a few hours, that will give people time enough to relax and sew one and, um, you know, maybe work on the fitting, cut some bias binding, make changes if they want. So I think that'll be a good class length. So thanks for helping me troubleshoot this, you guys. Oh, late dinner. Have a good dinner, Julia. Have a good long weekend if you get one. I forgot it's Monday. I'm supposed to take Monday off, you know, because it's Memorial Day. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I kind of don't have anything to do at the house because I make it that way. I like being here. Is dinner time for you too, Lisa? Perfect. I hope. I know. I hope dinner's being made at my house. <laughs> cool. Well, um, Nancy, have fun sewing all night. We'll think of you while we're sleeping. You can think of us. And um, maybe I'll see you guys tomorrow, 11 a.m. And then um, have a great weekend if I don't see you. I know Louise is going out to dinner. And someone else was doing something too. So bye, guys. Have fun. Have a good weekend. Where's my little button here? So thanks. Talk to you later.